Hey, thanks for watching. And today we want to do something really, really cool. We would like to integrate a function over a helix. How cool is that? So think like a DNA helix, and we kind of want to integrate a function over this crazy curve. Yes, because mathematicians do crazy stuff sometimes. Um, so calculate the following. It's called the line integral. The line integral of the function x squared plus y squared plus z squared ds, where c is just a helix parametrized by the following by, I think, x of t is just cosine of t, y of t equals sine of t, and then z of t, z of t is just t. And we assume it does three revolutions, so t is between 0 and 6 pi. Of course, this is all for giggles, but I also want to illustrate something. Anything we learn for line integrals, or uh, yeah, especially for line integrals in two dimensions, can also be easily generalized in three dimensions. Uh, the question is, oh, what is going on? So let me just draw a little picture of the situation. So suppose you have this helix, and it's a helix because in the xy coordinates, it's a circle, but it's going up with the height t. So I think what it looks like is, so this is one revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions, okay, something like that. Okay, one, two, three, yeah. And, and what you should think of it as, it's almost like it is a wire. Think of it as a wire, and I'm telling you that the density of that wire gets larger and larger the more we increase the radius. So here maybe it's not that heavy, but then it gets like heavier, heavier, kinda, kinda, and then maybe heavier, 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 okay? And the question is, what is the mass of that wire? And this is what this line integral is. If you like geometry, you can also think of this as a three-dimensional thing and then a surface floating on in fourth dimension. And what it does, it calculates, on, it actually does, it calculates the area on, of the fence under that surface but over that curve. So you should really think of this as tracing out some weird four-dimensional fence and that's what that line integral calculates or simply summing up the function over uh, the curve, if you like. Okay, then how do we do this? Well, first we draw the picture, then we parameterize this. Man, if only we knew how to parameterize this parameterized thing. Well, <laughs> turns out I was you know, nice enough, I gave you the parameterization. So we don't have to do this anymore. And then all we need to do is just to integrate that function. Okay. So just similar to a uh, line in to two-dimensional case. So integrate x squared plus y squared plus z squared ds. Now, that becomes the integral from what to what? From 0 to 6 pi of x of t squared plus y of t squared plus z of t squared. So just like in two dimensions, you just replace x and y and now z with the parametrizations and you multiply this by what? Well, by ds before ds was square root of uh, x prime squared plus y prime squared. But now the only change is it's square root of x prime t squared plus y prime t squared plus z prime t squared dt. See, very similar. You just add this third component. And so what we get is integral from 0 to 6 pi of cosine t squared so 
cosine squared t plus y squared, which is sine squared of t, plus t, z squared, which is t squared, times the derivative of x squared, so minus sine of t squared, plus the derivative of y, so cosine of t squared, plus the derivative of z squared, so 1 squared dt. And notice all this simplifies very beautifully. Namely, cosine squared plus sine squared, that's just 1. And sine squared plus cosine squared, that's 1. If you add 1, it becomes 2. So we're just doing square root of that. So essentially what this becomes, it's square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to 6 pi of, I think, t squared plus 1, dt, which becomes square root of 2 times t cubed over 3 plus t from 0 to 6 pi, which becomes square root of 2 times 6 pi cubed over 3 plus 6 pi. This is a perfectly acceptable answer, but if you really want to simplify this even more, I think it's 6 pi square root of 2 times, so I think 36 pi squared, so over 3, so I think 12 pi squared, and then plus 1. Okay, there you go. So I'm all, the mass of this DNA helix is this weird expression. Um, all right, so if you like this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.